Yeah, I'm going up. Eleven percent across the board. There is a church in Shrewsbury, right? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. Well, see how you get here in Shrewsbury. It shows where it is. Yes, probably.
Good evening. evening. Welcome this evening to our divine service. And uh, we're not going to celebrate a feast day today. I thought we'd take a break from that. We're actually going to continue to use the previous Sunday from the other lectionary. So we'll hear some things that we've already heard this summer and some things that we haven't. So we'll keep it interesting for you. Our service follows divine service setting three, page 184. And I encourage you to stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment, but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Turn to the insert. We'll speak the intro at half verse by half verse. But we will bless the Lord. As for me, I have set my king. On Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Praise the Lord, all nations. Exalt him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. But we will bless the Lord. From this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee. We glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father, Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, 
Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, grant us to know your Son, Jesus, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may boldly confess him to be the Christ and steadfastly walk in the way that leads to life eternal. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 51. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, that I might bless him and multiply him. For the Lord comforts Zion. He comforts all her waste places and makes her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Again, we turn to the insert, and we'll pray our psalm, again, half verse by half verse. Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before God, I your grace. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul will give you All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord. For they have heard the words of our mouth. And they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, 
you preserve my life. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from Romans chapters 11 and 12. Oh, the depth of the riches and the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. You are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. Alleluia! 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 The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Confess together by the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father. may be seated. The hymn of the day is Built on the Rock, hymn 645.
In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Could I consider the gospel again tonight that uh, we considered not that long ago on the feast of the confession of St. Peter, or yes, of St. Peter, uh, but specifically these words, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So this particular scripture has in it great words of comfort for you and for me. It is Matthew's institution of what we call the office of the keys, that special authority which Christ has given to his church to forgive the sins of repentant sinners, but to withhold forgiveness from the unrepentant as long as they do not repent. Now, in the catechism, we are asked then, where is this written? And it's what the holy evangelist St. John writes in John chapter 20, the Lord Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And then very similar words, whosoever sins you, plural, forgive, they are forgiven them. Whoever sins you do not forgive, they are not forgiven them. What's important to note here is that in John's account, uh, again, it's you, plural. Uh, we don't really talk that way in English, do we? Uh, but here the Southerners have it right when they say y'all. You all, right? So in John's account, the office of the keys is given to all the disciples there gathered, the 11 in the upper room on um, eight days after our Lord's resurrection. Here in this account, it's given specifically, uh, spoken to Peter. And that has caused no end of abuse. Opportunity was, uh, was apparent then to the Church of Rome in particular, who saw there, the opportunity to ground their church or ecclesiastical authority, not in the apostolic mandates to go and baptize and to teach, to absolve and to forgive sins, to administer the sacrament according to the Lord's command. Those things clearly are given elsewhere to, well, first to the apostles and thereby to the whole church. But they saw the opportunity here where it is spoken in the singular, I give you, that is Peter, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you, singular, plural, or not plural, you, Peter, loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I don't think these two texts are in conflict with each other, but again, the Church of Rome saw an opportunity here um, to ground their authority in not just any of the apostles, but quite specifically in what they would call the chief of the apostles, the one who's usually their spokesperson, the spokesperson, and that is St. Peter. This is why at the time of the Reformation, the Church of Rome decided to build a large basilica in the Vatican um, to St. Peter, St. Peter's Basilica, which was funded by, famously, at the time of the Reformation, you know this, by the indulgences. But that's an important note because by taking this text from Matthew 16 and saying that forgiveness of sins is bound to Peter specifically and only then by extension to the other apostles and not given to the church at large, they were able to control the distribution of forgiveness. Rather than that forgiveness breaking out whenever and wherever the Lord chooses to give it, whether it be um, spoken by the pastor and, uh, to the congregation in divine service or from the pulpit, uh, whether it's given in baptism or in the Lord's Supper, whether it's spoken by husband to wife or wife to husband or parents to children, or even workers, co-workers to one another, or employer to worker, or even forgiving civil leaders for their sins when they are repentant. That's the vision that the Lord has, and that's the great gift of forgiveness. And it is the work of the church to proclaim forgiveness to all. And yet, again, the Church of Rome saw a way of taking hold of that forgiveness and distributing it either on the basis of financial contributions in the case of indulgences, or in some cases with political motivation to those who they chose to give it to and withholding that forgiveness from those whom they disliked for political gain. And so they commanded to themselves an authority that God had not given. And to that point then, our Lutheran confessions um, have a whole article that primarily deals with this text. And it's not one that, I've, uh, that we've read together or I've shared with you. 
Um, but it is called the Treatise on the Power and Primacy of the Pope. Have you heard of it? Okay. Yeah, anytime we have an installation, ordination, um, you'll hear it when the, t when the teachers are reinstalled in a week, a week from Sunday. Uh, the treatise, written by Luther, is, well, it is a mag magnum opus on, really, the papacy and all of its errors. And there's a whole section just on this Matthew text. I'm going to share a little bit with you, and you'll hear how the argument goes. They, that is the Church of Rome, cite against us certain passages, namely Matthew 16. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Also, I give you the keys, as well John 21, feed my lambs, and some others. Since this entire controversy has been fully and accurately treated elsewhere in the books of our theologians, and there Luther's referring to the Augsburg Confession and elsewhere, everything cannot be reviewed here. We refer to those writings and wish them to be considered repeated here. Yet, we will briefly reply about the interpretation of the passages above, namely our gospel text. In all these passages, Peter is the representative of the entire assembly of the apostles, as appears from the text itself. Christ does not ask Peter alone when he says, who do you say that I am? What is said here to Peter alone in the singular number, I will give you, singular, the keys, and whatever you, singular, bind, is elsewhere expressed in the plural. Whatever you, plural, bind, and whatever you, plural, forgive the sins of anyone, John 20. These words show that the keys are given to all the apostles alike and that all the apostles are sent forth alike, as I said a few minutes ago. In addition, it must be recognized that the keys belong not to the person of, an, of one particular man, but to the church. The keys belong to the church. Most, many most clear and firm arguments show this. For Christ, speaking about the keys, adds, for example, if two of you agree on earth, also our gospel text. Therefore, he grants the keys first and directly to the church. This is why it is first the church that has the right of calling. For just as the promise of the gospel belongs certainly and immediately to the entire church, so the keys belong immediately to the entire church, because the keys are nothing else than the office whereby this promise is communicated to everyone who desires it, just as it is actually manifest that the church has the power to ordain ministers of the church. And Christ speaks in these words, whatsoever you shall bind, etc., and indicates to whom he has given the keys, namely to the church, where two or three are gathered in my name. Likewise, Christ gives supreme and final jurisdiction to the church when he says, tell it to the church. Therefore, these passages demonstrate that Peter is the representative of the entire assembly of the apostles. They do not grant Peter any privilege or superiority or lordship. As for the declaration on this rock, I will build my church, certainly the church has not been built upon the authority of a man. Rather, it has been built upon the ministry of the confession Peter made, in which he proclaims that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Therefore, Christ addresses Peter as a minister on this rock, that is, on this ministry. Therefore, he addresses him as a minister of this office in which this confession and doctrine is to be in operation and says, upon this rock, that is, this preaching and preaching office. Furthermore, the ministry of the New Testament is not bound to places and persons like the Levitical ministry was, the Old Testament ministry. Rather, it is spread throughout the whole world. That is where God gives his gifts, apostles, prophets, pastors, and teachers. Nor does this ministry work because of the authority of any person, but because of the word given by Christ. Nor does the person add anything to this word or office. It matters not who is preaching and teaching it. If there are hearts who receive and cling to it, to them it is as they hear and believe. I could keep going. <laughs> he quotes some other texts and also some of the church fathers. So you hear that our Lutheran confession is careful not only to properly understand the text from its clear meaning, not trying to impose a meaning upon it, simply to command some ungiven authority and then exercise that authority uh, for fundraising and other kinds of spiritual abuse. But Luther and the other confessors are quite careful to articulate the scriptures accurately so that the gift that the Lord desires to give is not withheld from you. The, go the goal here is not that 
we be stingy with the gifts that the Lord gives, but rather that we would commend those um, who are here and even those who aren't here to receive these gifts frequently and regularly without limit, without imposition, that the cup of the Lord would overflow in grace and mercy for them. There's not such a thing as having too much of the forgiveness of sins. It doesn't become less special or less important the more you hear it and receive it. Instead, the more we hear of the forgiveness of sins, the more we know our need for that forgiveness because coupled with forgiveness, of course, is the proclamation of God's law, which shows us our sin and our need to be forgiven daily and richly. And so the, the gift here is that Peter is, well, not taking on an authority of his own. He's not commanding, but rather he is receiving. And as Peter receives, then he is to give, which is the whole life of the Christian. We heard this in the epistle. All of the various gifts that the Lord gives to the members of the body, each living stones built up into his church, each of them receive their gifts in order to be used for the benefit of their neighbor. So Peter receives the office of the ministry, not to be a superior Christian, elevated above, a clerical class that is more important than those in the pew, the laity, but rather he is given this authority in order to distribute the gifts of God, to be a servant, which is why Jesus washed his feet, to anoint him as one who would preach the good news to the poor just as Jesus himself had done. And that's why Jesus was careful, and I think Rome missed this point, to articulate that everything that Peter said and everything that he was given was gift to him. Even the confession that he made that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, was revealed to him, not by his own flesh and blood, not from his mind or his wisdom or his intellect or his insight or perceptions, but rather it was revealed to him by the Father who is in heaven. And of course, that's the whole nature of the church. God reveals to us the church. He institutes the offices of preacher and teacher in the church in order that the gifts would be distributed, again, according to his word. All of this being a gift revealed by the word, not a gift that's commanded or taken unto oneself, but one that is received with humility and always for the benefit of those who need to receive. In this case, the loosing of sins, not only here on earth, but ultimately before God in heaven. Forgiven, restored, and with that comes then resurrection and life everlasting. Thanks be to Jesus in his holy name. Amen. Amen. We stand to sing the offertory. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, bless this congregation, that our ears would be opened by the Spirit to the gospel of peace and salvation, and that our lips would show forth our thanks and praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Bless the church throughout the world and our synod, especially our district, that all congregations, pastors, and agencies would serve faithfully and without fear. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all in authority, by whose service you provide the gift of order, including parents and family, our government, our police and firemen, our military, and our schools. Give them strength and endurance to carry out their duties for the good of those entrusted to their care. Lord, in your mercy. We ask you to bless the sick, the frail, and the dying, including in our prayers tonight, Pam Becker, and also those whom we now name in our hearts. Lord, grant them healing and restore them to health. We pray also for doctors, nurses, therapists, and all who tend to our brothers and sisters in need. Bless them as they put the talents you have given them to good use. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all who partake this day of Christ's most precious body and blood in the sacrament of the altar. Give them discernment of his body that they would come to his table in humility and faith to receive the forgiveness of sins and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Finally, Heavenly Father, you brought us forth by the word of truth, by your own gracious will. Implant the word of truth in us, which is able to save our souls, that we may be the first fruits of the new creation. This we ask through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with my spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of Sabaoth, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that takest away the...
O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with the Spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Amen.